Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're going to be installing a wet switch flood detector for a split system. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. So that was the condensing unit up on the roof and here is our indoor air handler. This is a split system with emergency electric heat and they use their primary heat from a hot water coil which is tied to a boiler that is downstairs in the basement. I'm going to start by removing the power to this unit. Opening up our control panel and looking into this wiring. So here is our control panel. And here are our thermostat cables coming into the system. So here is our wet switch flood detector made by Diversitech. Personally, this is my favorite wet switch of all time. I love how there's LED lights here. So when we have a green light on the left side, we have power and everything is working. And if it senses moisture, we're gonna get a red light indicating, of course, that we have moisture and that we have water. So it's really cool that you can actually test it with this red button and to reset it, you just press the green one. On the control itself, we have a diagram. We have here five wires. This is a control that is powered by 24 volts. So you will need a step down transformer. We do have 24 volts here. So our red and black wire gets directly connected to power. So our red and black is our 24 volts. And this goes to each side once of the transformer. I'll explain that later. And then we have here three wires. This is gonna be our contacts. So we have here a common, which is our green wire. And then we have two points. We have a orange and a white which is one is normally open, which is the white and the orange is normally closed. So there is nowhere to actually run these wires. So I have a step bit and I'm gonna use one of these connectors to run my wires in. I think I'm just gonna go through right here and run the wires into our control panel. put this in Have the wires through let's try to run it neatly so where everything is safe hopefully this fits oh that's a beautiful thing so now everything has appropriate connectors and we can begin to look in in to this wiring we're going to start with our power and that's going to be on our secondary of our transformer our primary is 208 volts and our secondary is 24. so here's our transformer it's always important to read your transformer and not always go by color because typically your 24 volts what i usually see is blue and yellow but that's not the case here so let's take a look at our diagram and go over this so we can wire this properly. This is backwards, but I will post a picture in the video. If you want, screenshot with that your phone and we can go over this together. Watch the video as you look at the picture. So we have two sides to a transformer. We have a primary and a secondary. Your primary is gonna be your high voltage and your secondary is gonna be your low voltage. Very important not to go by color, just off the bat, but to read your label. So our primary, we have three wires. We have a blue, we have a black, and we have a orange. So if we follow this, uh, our common is orange. And then depending if you're using 208 or 240, we're gonna use either the blue or the black. It says the blue is 
208 volts and our black is 240 volts. Now we identify our primary. Let's identify the secondary, which we have two wires. The secondary, we have a, a brown and a red. So down here, this is our 24 volts. So this is one leg and then the brown right here. So our wet switch is gonna get connected to each side of the, tr of the uh, secondary. So one on the round wire, one on the red. So our 24 volts on our wet switch is our red and black wire. I'll also show a clear picture of this and I would recommend that you screenshot that as we go over all of this. So our black and our red is our 24 volts. So our black and our red wire is gonna connect connected to the secondary of our transformer, which is the brown and the red leg. So what I did, I peeled back this insulation because I wanna have my um, 24 volt connection over here, right where the wires are. And then this, I'm gonna run upstairs to where this control board is because that's where we're gonna have the other rest of the wires. I just want like everything uh, neat. And at the same time, I want this cable to protect these wires because there is electrical heaters in here. So the contacts are gonna be up here. Get connected on that side, but our 24 volts, which is the red and black, will be connected right here as everything's already cut for me. So I'm just gonna pull back the wire nuts and put one wire on each end. So we're gonna cut back on the insulation on these wires and just put one on each end of that transformer. And now we have power to our wet switch and then we can focus on the contacts. So one red wire goes to one side of the transformer and the black wire goes to the other side. We're gonna cap this off and we're done with our 24 volts. So that's all done. Now we can wire our contacts. We have three wires left. We have an orange, white, and green. Our green is going to be our common. And then we have our orange, which is normally closed and white as normally open. We're gonna be using the normally closed points. So if everything's okay, everything's gonna be running. But if this senses water, it's going to then open the circuit and shut everything down. So this transformer is actually what feeds power to the thermostat. So power is coming out of this board. So it goes through uh, 24 volts is being sent out of this unit and actually feeds the thermostat. So 24 volts is coming out through here, but now it's gonna go into the wet switch and then out of the wet switch and then feed the thermostat. So if this senses water, it's gonna open our R. And by doing that, we're gonna kill the 24 volts to the trans from the transformer and everything's gonna shut down because we know that when the AC is in cooling mode, we have uh, condensation. And if for some, any reason, there's gonna get water, or let's say the drain uh, gets clogged, or for whatever reason, we have, we sense water. This is gonna open the circuit, which is really gonna open the transformer, kill all the low voltage power and shut everything down. It's gonna kill our condensing unit, the fan, and everything's gonna be off. So by doing that, now the condensing unit is no longer operating and we're no longer sweating. So we're gonna stop the water and you know prevent further issues from happening because we all know water is a huge issue. So we're gonna wire nut this so we don't have any issues. And from here, we're gonna be able to test the unit. And what's really awesome is that we don't need to set this off with water to test it. We can just press the red button, which says push to test, it's so cool. So when we turn this on, we're gonna have, we should have a green light. 
we click push to test, we're gonna pretend, we're gonna trick the circuit into thinking that there's moisture and we're gonna open these contacts and the red light should appear. So let's get this going. All right, everything's closed up. I'm gonna turn on the power and we should get a green light. All right. We got a green light indicating we have power. And if we have a red light, it indicates that we have moisture present. So what we're gonna do is turn on the cooling, make sure everything works, and then we're gonna test it to see if everything shuts down. I'm gonna set it to cool. Okay. To test this, I'm going to click the red test button. So everything should turn off and we should get a red light here. So that should have killed our transformer. Let's give it a minute, this is an ECM motor. Slowing down. <laughs> oh my God. That almost scared me for a second. So everything shut off. Let's see what happens. Let's check everything else. All right, here we are at the thermostat. We lost the power to the thermostat. That's good because we killed the power to the transformer. I just made my way back up to the condensing unit. This shut off as well. I already figured as much because if we lost the power to the thermostat, then we really broke that transformer and there's no more control voltage, nothing should work. So that was pretty much it. That is how you do it. And I use dry contacts and we basically just broke the R wire, which is our 24 volts from our transformer. And yeah, this is a great job. All right, and just to reset this, we're gonna click the green button, which says push to reset, and everything should come back on. Okay, so we got our display back on the thermostat, and we have a delay, because it's saying wait. And we're set to cooling. We're just gonna test everything as far as temperatures, and yeah. It's a beautiful day out here in New York, and if anybody found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like comment and subscribe and I'll catch you all next time.